it just annoys me so much and I'm just like please like don't don't like do a crash diet and try and get a another video of girl talk which I know I've been lagging on so yeah um, I've decided to base it on like weight loss and stuff so I hope you guys will enjoy it but um, I just want to do a quick little disclaimer I feel like I've never mentioned this before but I just want to point out guys can watch this too even though it's called girl talk like I don't feel like it's just restricted to girls because I, a lot of what I talk about or have been talking about will be based on like things that most young people slash teenagers will go through at some point and okay there may be some topics that are more directed towards girls and females because I because I'm a female myself like okay I'm a female okay guys and um, so I can only comment like I'm using my own experience yes I'm using some facts and stuff sometimes not always but sometimes I will use some facts and statistics but a lot of the time I'm using my own experiences so I can only give from my personal viewpoint and the viewpoint from a female and a male can be very different on some topics other topics not so much, but some topics yes. So that's all I can really say. Um, but it is open to everyone pretty much, so feel free to watch. Next little thing, I've got an intro-ish, this intro-ish thing that I want to do, which is talking about a few things that are not related to this video in any way, but I kind of just want to talk about because it revolves my life, I guess, and changes and stuff like that. And if you don't want to stick around to watch that, that's cool because. As you know, when I have my girl talk videos, I'm looking at my viewfinder so I can see what I'm pointing to. I have like kind of links on the side here leading to to different parts of the video. So you can click on the first part of the link and go straight to the first part of the video. Or if you want to listen to me ramble for a little while, for like a minute probably or so, keep on watching. So, as you guys can see, I have less hair. Now this is the first YouTube video I'm posting with this smaller amount of hair. And it's just like just past like my chest, I guess, I guess you say. Um, but yeah, if you follow me on like Instagram and stuff, which is in the description, shameless plug, if you want to follow me, I post cool things, not really, but yeah. Um, if you follow me on there, you've already seen it and stuff, and it was a massive cut off from where my hair originally went, which was. I can't show you on camera right now because it's not a shot, but like just above my bum, I think. Possibly, maybe, I think it was that. And it was time for a change, basically. I'm go I've am I'm gone to uni now, like when I'm filming this now, it's the end of my first week, it's a Saturday night, it's the end of my first like official week, other than like Freshers' Week. Freshers' Week kind of like nothing really. This is when I've had my first week of like lectures and lessons and seminars and stuff. And oh my god, guys, I actually quite enjoy it. Um, but basically, I just needed a change for that, so I cut off loads of it, thinned loads of it out because my hair is really thick. And yeah, I couldn't be happier actually. I kind of do miss my long hair, especially when I'm curling it and stuff, but it's good, I like it, it's a nice change. So yeah, as, as well, like as I just mentioned, uni, so I talked about that, is that I'm still trying to schedule a bit, so um, I started making my schedule last night because I'm doing English and creative writing, and anyone who's done English at a degree level knows that there's a lot of reading that you have to do for the course, and they also expect you to do a lot of wider re reading of your own choice. Now that's cool, because I love reading. Like, I'm sure you know that, because I've mentioned it a few times. But the issue is, is which reading's more important, set text or wider reading? Hence, I'm having to timetable and fit in time to read both my set text and my own wider reading that I want to do. And on top of it, fit in YouTube, blogging and Wattpad writing. And also, I phone for my auntie ch auntie's channel here on YouTube. So that as well. And I need to fit in a lot of that. So that's why this is just a random video on a Saturday or may go put on a Sunday actually now that I think about it or a Monday because I don't have New Year on Monday anyway do I? No I don't have a Monday lessons so yeah it'll basically go up this week and it's kind of like a random video because I felt like filming a girl talk video but I didn't know when to put it up so basically that's it but once I have a schedule figured out I think it's going to go back to weekends hopefully so Sunday uploads most likely so yeah 
Okay, and that was that really. I think that's my main intro done. Just need a little sippy sippy off my tea. Because it's like, okay, well it's really late, it's like half eight right here now. And it's not really my tea time, but I usually have tea around six and I kind of missed it, so I'm having it now. So yeah, let's get to the main part of the video. So the first part is weight loss in young people. Sorry guys, I'm looking at my little notebook, I wrote notes. Do you want to see how cute my notebook is? It's so cute, it's got an owl on it. So yeah. Weight loss in young people. Okay, so let's get started. I don't have a lot of facts on this topic just because it was really hard to find things. I googled weight loss in young people and I like abbreviated it and changed it up the wording to try and find different searches. But everything I come across was things like if you are a teen, how do you lose weight? How to lose teen if you're a, how to lose teen? How to lose weight if you're a teen or tips for teens for losing weight and things like that. So that wasn't very helpful because that's not exactly what I'm talking about in this video. So I brought a few notes and I'm going to try and use them, so yeah, let's go. So, why? Why do young people want to lose weight? Now, there's very different reasons for this, and I've come up with a few of my own, kind of, mentally, so I haven't exactly written some of this stuff down. But mentally, I'm thinking one of the main reasons is peer pressure. In some form, not necessarily to the form of we kind of may know, like intense peer pressure, but some form. So, when you're in school, and like when you're just in education as a whole, friendship plays a huge part in your life. And if you're, say, on the bit of the chubbier side, or I don't know, like, maybe overweight in your own eyes, then your friends constantly commenting on that doesn't help. And people in general in school commenting on that doesn't help because we're at that age where what people say actually does matter and yes there are some people who may say that oh what someone says to me doesn't matter but deep down it really does like back in your subconscious wherever it is in the brain back in your subconscious it does really matter so the main reason I one of the main reasons I think why is people do it is because of that pressure of like oh people think of that I don't want to be kind of thing that's what I feel anyway um also um media which I'm going to talk on further in another segment in this video but the media plays a huge role actresses um, actors models you know the whole shebang which I'll discuss later but that plays a huge part and I'm sure some of you already know what I'm talking about because I did mention the media in my acne video too and it's kind of similar but they play a huge role because it affects how you see yourself and how you should you think you should be when really you're pretty normal Okay, so the next bit is how. Um, that's the why bit, why people want to lose weight. The next bit is how. So, from what I've seen, or what I've heard from other people like my age, or when I've been in school and stuff, is that a lot of young people seem to lose weight through fad slash crash diets. So, those kind of weird diets you see online, like cut out this and do it for 10 days and you'll lose this much weight and stuff. Now, let me put this out there, those diets are not good because you're forcing your body to do a certain thing that it's not used to, first of all. And second of all, they just, the, I think the reason they call, well, if I think, well, I, I think about this, the reason they call crash diet because you essentially may, your body will crash. You are going to have a crash in your body, you may faint, you may lose unconsciousness, you may feel um, unmotivated, you're not, it's, you won't be able to work because you're in an educational level, you're at school, college, uni, whatever and you need to be able to do those things and um, because of the crash diets you won't be able to because you'll be low on energy you want to sleep all the time and it just won't work for you so yeah another one is just not eating at all or cutting out meals I know some people are like our age we just don't eat breakfast and that's fine because I didn't used to eat breakfast all the time when I was in school and college some mornings I would, some mornings I would, some mornings I'll just have a, like a cup of mm, hot chocolate and that's it kind of thing and that would last me for three hours until lunchtime or something so that's not a I'm not going to comment on that even though we always say breakfast is the biggest part of the day, it's the most important meal of the day and you should do it but I'm not going to like kind of lecture you saying oh do you have it because first of all I'm not a dietitian, I can't tell you what to do and what not to do, this is your own life choices but I can give you the advice I guess, I don't know, I just discuss it in general but um, like cutting out your other meals, so like I know I, I've actually seen this in my school when I was in school like, so the, first of all, the girls wouldn't eat breakfast, okay, that's fine, whatever. And then there'd be girls who wouldn't eat lunch at all. And then, okay, those girls may have gone home and had a big dinner then, or like, had like, takeout and stuff, which first of all, isn't really good for you either, because you've been hungry all these hours of the day, and now it comes to like, what, 
four or five o'clock and you binge eat on like food. You don't necessarily binge because you're not vomiting it back up. That's another thing, binge eating. Um, but you, you're you stuffing your body with all this bad food and it's suddenly like wanting to take it in. It's like, oh yes, food. Yes, yes, yes. Let's take it all in. And it's not the right food for it, essentially. And yes, I know we're teenagers. We eat bad food, but it's all in moderation. It's all about moderation. That's what it is. So, um... Another thing is, yeah, like replacing meals with, I don't know, I don't know if this actually works, but I don't agree with it at all. Replacing meals with um, those kind of milkshake things, I don't get it, like, I find it stupid, like, I don't know how that's going to help or how that's going to make you feel better. I guess, like, I, I mean, I'm all for milkshakes, like, I love using my Nutribullet and making milkshakes for myself and, like, smoothies and stuff like that, but um, that would be, like, for instance, like, for breakfast, to replace breakfast, but then I'd still eat like a normal size lunch and a normal size dinner. Or like, I'd have that like after a workout, which I don't do very often because I'm lazy, but after a workout, like kind of thing. But I don't see it as something to replace all three meals. Or even I don't see it as something that I can have for breakfast and let me, then at lunch, not even lunch, lunch, don't eat anything. And then right at the end of the day, like seven, eight o'clock or something, I don't know, like, Seven, I don't know what time people eat dinner, but 7 8 o'clock, eat a very small amount of dinner. Like, I don't see how that can help you at all. I don't know if it does or not, like, I'm not an expert in this, I've never done any of this. Um, I just, I just don't see how it would work. So, did I just drop tea? Ooh, I thought I just dropped tea. But, yeah, that's, I think that's how a lot of young people are losing weight nowadays. Or at least, I've seen it sometimes and I've, like, heard of it and stuff, so yeah. Sorry, I really want to drink it before it goes cold as well, so, um, you guys know, I, this is usually a rambly video all the time. Okay, so the things it leads to, <sighs> sorry guys, some deep topics here now, but anorexia, binge eating, which then leads to anorexia sometimes, and then, okay, let's talk about those first. So anorexia, you'll end up to the point where you're so skinny and you won't even realise it, and you you feel like, okay, I've, I've never been anorexic, let me put that out there, so I can't explain it. But I've been underweight, like severely underweight. But I have a, it wasn't like myself, like I didn't force myself to lose weight, it kind of just happened when it wasn't supposed to happen kind of thing. So I can't exactly explain this from a person's point of view who has been anorexic, but I was close to like being quite very severely underweight, like it wasn't healthy at all, according, like, I may have looked healthy at that time, like people who knew me back in like, I'm about to fall off my stool. Um, people who knew me back in like, yes, seven, no, eight, nine, I may have looked healthy, but according to my height, I really was a, that was not a suitable weight for me to be at. I was five, I'm like five, seven now, five, eight now. I was probably like five, 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 six or something. And being five, weighing five, six stones, for that height, that's not good. For that height, I should have been at least seven, eight stones. And even now, I should be at least nine to ten stones, and I only weigh eight stones. But I can't help it. I have a fast metabolism, so... Yeah. Um, but talking about the anorexia thing, sorry, I'm going off track quite a bit. Um, going off the anorex, going on the anorexia thing, it's just that you look in the mirror and you will see yourself as ugly, fat, and whatever else these people see, because obviously as I said, I haven't experienced this myself, but this is what I've seen in other videos and things I've watched. But in reality, you are really sick. You are ill, you are very fragile. You have bones showing, okay? It's, it's actually a very severe thing. I don't think some people take it seriously enough. Like, anorexia is really severe. And unfortunately, binge eating can lead that to that too, because you're essentially eating everything and then throwing it back up again. And then it's that it's that you want to eat and you eat everything but you feel guilty for eating it so you throw it up and it's just it's not a good life it's not a good fear it's not a way to live your childhood and live your teenagers because those are some of your best years of your life you know what? okay the okay from someone who's had the worst some of the worst years of teenagehood it can be the worst years of, te of your life but they can also be the best years if you decide to make it that way and for you to have to go through that instead of making it the best time is it's just really sad and I'd like to try and like decrease that as much as I personally can kind of thing so that's why I'm making this video as well 
So yeah, um, also then, when you get to that point, sorry, it's actually really warm in here, I'm just going to take this off. Um, when it gets to that point where you're like, anorexic, you can also feel alone then, and then, uh, because people feel that you're really weird, or like, for instance, you may have been, um, admitted into hospital and stuff and you feel alone, or like, even, you just feel isolated because you feel like no one will get it, no one will understand maybe even, kind of thing, and then that can lead to depression. And I think most of us know that sometimes clinical depression can lead to suicide. So, yeah, there you go. It's a bit, I know that's a bit dark of the video, but unfortunately it does happen. There have been cases of not only girls, guys, well, like just young people. I'm not saying, I don't know the statistics for this. Like I said, I couldn't find anything and I couldn't, well, there must have been, but I probably wasn't looking properly, but there have been cases of suicides because of depression and the depression comes from that so yeah Whew. okay okay the next topic big branched topic is the media so as I was saying before we see models we see actors we see actresses we see all these people that, yes, they're real people, they're ordinary people, like, in their ordinary life, but on the screen, they're not. They have those kind of jobs where they need to look presentable, need to look good. And as someone who's been a drama student and was actually considering drama as a career and has decided not to now, you have to look good, you have to look presentable and stuff. But you see those, and you see the billboards, you see the magazines, and you see skinny or somewhat skinny, or maybe skinnier than you are, at least, models. I'm going to talk models more. Now, the modelling industry is tough, it's harsh. They, there are some modelling companies out there. I've seen vid movies and stuff based on this. I've, I've seen a few Bollywood movies based on this, a few Hollywood ones, it's like general movies based on this, and I've read up on this a little bit, So, but I don't remember any like sources, so I'm really sorry and stuff, but... um. There have been some uh, modelling like agencies, I guess you call them, or companies. Like they will expect you to be a, they like in general. In general, modelling you have very like restrictions. Like you have very quite specific requirements: height, weight, this, that, like kind of thing. They expect like there's a lot of expectation when you want to be a model, and a lot of the times, weight is a big thing. And like you have to sometimes. Some companies will make you lose a certain amount of weight, and especially before like a big show, especially if like say for instance if you're a show, show stopper, I think they call it, a show stopper or something then, they'll make you be like losing so much weight before the show, or even if they don't, it's sometimes the model themselves, they get to the point where they feel like, oh shit, I need to lose weight, like I've been eating loads of food, blah blah blah, I need to lose that weight, and now that we think about it, like, that's not a nice life, and the models sometimes are forced into that, like, so looking up to them and being like, I want to be like that, I get it, I, I honestly do because although I've always kind of been on the skinnier side, that doesn't mean I haven't looked up to them and be like, I want to be like that too at some point, probably, I don't I don't know how far back, probably 7, 8 possibly, I don't know. Um, you don't want to be, you know, like, it's, you just don't want to be because that's, they, they themselves probably don't want to be, I don't know if they do or not, maybe like deep down, subconsciously, in your mind place they don't want to eat and again a lot of the times models we've seen cases of like I've seen them on Facebook and stuff people being changed like they've shown the before shots of um them and after I know I saw a shot of the Pretty Little Liars um the four girls if you know if you watch Pretty Little Liars you'll know um they did it like a photo shoot and one of them I don't know who it was I think it may have been Lucy Hale or Troyan I'm not sure they posted on their Instagram like the original photos and stuff and when I compared them to oh my voice just cracked that was weird when I compared them to the ones that were actually published kind of thing and like put into the magazine blah blah they didn't look that much different but you could just tell they've been slimmed down a bit and like because it was kind of like a bikini shot I think like they were wearing bikinis and stuff and you could see they were curved a bit nicely a bit more like in the original photos you could see like where they're I guess some people call like their insecurities are kind of thing 
and like in those new photos you can physically see where they've been carved out a bit more or some, like things like that and that's what the media is that's what magazines do I mean I think it's just some magazines it's just part of the process some magazines don't do it but some magazines still do and it's part of their process I guess and I don't I can't really comment on that whatever like I don't really care whatever but um unfortunately it creates a really bad image for a lot of young people young girls young guys to look up to so we just got to remember we've always got to remember that 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 isn't real necessarily. It could be because the magazines, like I said, don't, but that isn't necessarily real. And if it is real, just remember that the modern modeling industry is harsh and often the model doesn't want to be in the state, like physically. By the way, they don't want to be like that possibly sometimes. So we've just got to remember that. And also, next, oh, is it? Oh, also fat shaming, I want to talk about that because that's a big thing in the media and a big thing on social media and everything in general today in our like pop culture. So what is fat shaming? It's victimising people who are chubbier or fatter I guess if you want to really use the word overweight and um, some people say it's something that fat people, chubby people have used created a word they've created to avoid like taking control of their own health now I personally this is that's pathetic because yes there are some people that may use that like to not get fit but there are many people out there who are overweight for many different reasons yes it may have been their lifestyle but it may have also been genetics it may also be medical and you can't judge someone based on their story if you don't know why they're in the state they are now kind of thing like why they are the way they are now and not everyone wants to like they may be perfectly healthy on the inside but they look a bit plus size should i use that word i don't know if anyone should use that word that's another controversial word that a lot of people just don't like using but what's the word i use then people i say i don't want to offend anyone because i'm myself i'm i'm skinny and then like a whole come backlash on me or something i'm like oh god People who are overweight themselves, they may, they may be very healthy inside, but they just look overweight on the outside. And cool to them. Props to you. Like you, you have your curves, and yeah, I want curves. So you know, stop victimizing them. Okay, that's number one. Stop it. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about this because I don't, I don't want to be back like thrashed and attacked because of this. But the Nicole Arbor video. Oh, but as I saying it, talking about fat shaming. Now that was disgusting, and I hated it. And it was everything that, if you want to know, like why I hate fat shaming so much, go watch that video. And she's everything why I hated fat shaming and everything opposite. Kind of oh hey, like, I'm not making sense now, but I'm thinking it's kind of tired. But basically, if you want to really go watch that video, go watch that video, and it'll make sense why I hate fat shaming so much. And breathe. Okay, I need to sip of my tea okay I think I'm on to the last few bits now yes thigh gap this video was originally going to be just on the thigh gap but then I decided to combine it with other things what is the thigh gap first of all it's essentially the space and gap between your thighs when you stand together I can't show you on video can I? I don't know when you stand together can I tiptoe? you won't be able to see when you stand together the gap there so some people have a wider gap some people don't I can't really show you without being too indecent I guess um, I don't know why but people have the misconception that if you're skinny you're going to have a thigh gap and hello skinny person here I do not have a thigh gap my thighs Slam together, like literally slam together. Back to my book because I don't remember what I was going to say. Yes, okay. They slam together, and a lot of people have the misconception. The misconception that skinny, pe only skinny people can have it. Hence, why a lot of young people, when they see the thigh gap and stuff, they go ahead and try and lose weight, and that's the whole thing I was talking about before about young weight loss and stuff. And it's, I find it so stupid because the reason why some people, I don't know what, so why some people do it, but I've a bit, tiny bit of research on the thigh gap, and I find that some people do it because they think that the thigh gap looks better when they wear jeans, like skinny jeans, short skirt, shirt, 
short skirts and like just shorts in general kind of thing. I just don't get it. I wear skirts all the time. I wear like okay, I'm wearing skinny jeans all the time. But I've been starting to get into skinny jeans, and I think they look perfectly fine. Camera went off. Sorry. Um, I was saying, yeah, I don't, th I don't love how the way it looks on me, but I don't think you're ever going to be hundred percent like confident with how you look and perfect with how you look because no one's perfect kind of thing. But it looks the way I, it looks and whatever kind of thing. But because of that, people are going ahead to lose weight to get it. And the weight they do is the ones I said that are bad, like the crash diets, not eating, blah, blah, blah. But what people don't realise is that genetics plays a huge part in the diet gap. So, okay, for me, I'll give the example. Genetically, I have hips that are too set closely. So, like, my mum has a small pelvic. And I know that I possibly do too. And because of that small pelvic, she wasn't able to go through natural labour. She had to go through C-sections with all my siblings me and my siblings so because of that short set of hips being like really close I physically like can't have oh, I physically can't have a thigh gap without like binge bad dieting and like really making myself ill I guess and going really really skinny which I don't need like look how it's like fucking I'm skinny as it is I don't like I, I've been through the whole like losing weight which was nasty and I hated it and it made me feel like utter Cruds, cruds. I say cruds. It made me feel like utter cruds, and like I wouldn't want to go back there. You know what I'm like, kind of thing. But then there's people who have naturally wider set hips, and those people are the ones who can, if they eat nat, do it health, if they eat healthily and can, and they just naturally are healthy, kind of thing. They can possibly have thigh gap, and that's the way it works. I guess it just depends on whether you have wide set hips or close like set hips and it's essentially that but I guess some people don't understand and it's it just annoys me so much and I'm just like please like don't don't like do a crash diet and try and get a try and get thigh gap and you don't need it it's not gonna make it doesn't it doesn't make much of a difference it really doesn't I get irritated quickly I'm sorry okay I'm on to the last bit now I just need to drink water, not water, tea again. And yes, I'm sorry, it's a long video, I've only just realised how long it's going to be. Um. The last bit is the correct way to lose weight. If you do want to lose weight, go. I can't tell you not to because you're your own person. But if you're going to do it, at least do it the correct way which I'll kind of stay out, but I, like I said, I'm not a dietitian. I can't, like, tell you this is the correct way, but from what my own experience is and what I've read and stuff, this seems like the healthiest way without damaging yourself. So, eat, eat a healthy, balanced diet. So, that means food from all se seven, is it? Seven, seven groups, food groups, kind of thing. Don't overdo it on one, don't underdo it another eat them equally like I love food I eat all foods pretty much there's very small amount that I just won't eat because I'm a little picky with some foods but most foods I will eat kind of thing I eat food from like most of the food groups you know what I mean like so it's good you you should eat a healthy balanced diet drink water we've heard of that before so I'm not gonna like go into too much detail everything in moderation now yes okay you should probably cut out on some of the sugary stuff and some of the like sweet stuff and like fatty stuff but if you eat it in moderation then it's fine like i i rarely eat chocolate and when i do it's probably like twice maybe maybe three times that's if i'm having like a bad week like maybe it's the monthly time or something and i really crave it or something i eat chocolate more but i usually only eat it like three times a week or something and Okay, my sugary drinks is a bit bad, like I do drink uh, fizzy drinks sometimes, like three to four times a week, it just depends. But other than that, I think I don't eat bad food, like I think I eat pretty decent food. I do eat takeout sometimes, in my family we have takeout only once a week or once every two weeks. And then anytime we have other food, most, okay, I know, okay, Asian families will get this, like Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Indian maybe, I don't know, families will get this. We eat chapati a lot with curry. So any days we don't eat that, so there might be two, three days, like mainly the weekends, we won't eat that. It's basically we just make oven food or stuff, and like, yeah, just throw in some chicken to the oven and stuff, and we eat that. But other than that, it's probably like a Friday evening where there'll be like takeout, but this Friday there wasn't a takeout, so 
or was there? No, there was not a takeout. We had pizza, which my dad made at home by himself. So yeah. That's just, I, I'm just trying to give an example. It's moderation, so you can eat the food because good fats are good for you. Like, and you need some sugars, you know what I'm like? But it's just moderation. Also, dark chocolate, I've heard, is actually very good for you, and especially like in the monthly time. Sorry guys, if you don't want to hear this, the boys. But during the monthly time, I've heard is that it's better for you, I guess, but I, just, I personally can't stand the taste of dark chocolate, chocolate, so I might have to go for like half and half or 60% or something and try it out. But I've heard it like helps like lower your craving for it and stuff and it kind of really like kills the craving and all that so yeah okay the other one is stay fit through regular exercise now I can't say this because I'm not a regular exerciser but I do walk quite a bit because no one in my family owns a car even though my mum has passed years ago and I'm like learning and stuff which I'm not really but I should be because I've got my learner's provisional thing whatever it's called license thing but you should do at least one day a week, once a week at least. And because I do a lot of walking, I feel like it contributes to it, to one day. But I may start going on Mondays to the gym and do like this kind of fitness class thing where it's like flex and tone, that's what they call it. So, I don't know, maybe. I'm seeing, because I don't think I can do like full on gym anymore. Like, go there, do some like cardio, do some like weight stuff. I, I'm not motivated enough for that and my motivation is really bad, like I need motivation and it just doesn't work for me so I just have to see. Last one, oh yeah, the last one is have a positive mindset. Now if you really want to help with positivity and stuff like that, there are people on YouTube who do that. I know my auntie, okay, shameless plug, my auntie who runs a channel called Nadia TV, I'll put it on the screen maybe, um, does some like inspirational kind of things but they're more like based into religion and stuff so I don't know if everyone will be into that but just you know um mindset she always talks about mindset and how mindset positive mindset is important because for instance if you are trying to lose weight and you don't have a positive mindset of how it's going to end up in the end it's you're not going to like get to that goal kind of thing you're just not it's not going to happen so you need to always keep that positive and it's hard I know it is because I'm quite an optimistic person generally but there are moments where I can be very pessimistic and have really negative like mindset and stuff but you have to like try and push through it and make yourself mentally positive so yeah and one of the last things I want to say is know when too much is too far it's hard when the whole anorexia stuff happens and when you're starting to lean towards it but if you know it seek help that's all I can really say because only you can help yourself kind of thing and if you seek the help then you will get the help and that's all I can really say I think I think I'm done yeah I think I'm done this was quite an intense video and I'm sorry there was like dark bits when I talked about suicide and stuff like that but it fitted in so I did it been about a good half an hour since I've been filming. Let's hope this video isn't half an hour long. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this is informative and all that and please leave your suggestions of what other girl talk series you would like or like just generally other videos because I'm always adding to my lists and stuff because I love lists. I love them. Love them so much. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys real soon. Toodles!